yes, yes, yo, you don't stop, Big John, come rocking a short shot. We all back again, moving a million miles an hour, as always, racing towards the 2024 season. Actually, remember my video intro, welcome back, Mail Media, Big Johnny Stud coming at you. We are live right now. We're jumping right into the draft and already started. We're winding up the dinger here, turn $10 into 100 k Baby, baby, if that don't get you going. I don't know what will. Hopefully, I'm getting a little better at this stream stuff. I'm going to leave the board up for you. I'm going to make my picks on the side. Who am I? It's the girl, damn sugar. Big Johnny Stud coming to you worldwide from Brooklyn, New York. Coming at the chairs always. Big Johnny Stud, baby. You know it. Poet, you didn't know it. Okay, I think this is the third live stream we've done. Thank you to everybody that has watched and put up with this stuff. Um, yeah, you got to play this underdog. Right now is really the time where at like 95% full, so right at the very end, there really is a unique edge to playing at the end of best ball. If you're unfamiliar, right, best ball is no moves. Man, I should I – should, hold on, I'll get to that in a second. Best ball is no moves, right? No trading and no waivers or anything like that. So – Basically, the earlier you draft, right, the more theoretical value that there is. But the flip side would be uh, player gets hurt. And, you know, they're, they're out. And there's only 20 slots, very hard to take zeros, maybe impossible to take two zeros. So there, you know, if you waited, you don't really have to feel like you've missed a boat on this one whatsoever. And uh, yeah, I'm pushing, I'm pushing for it. I've been playing throughout. And I, that's probably one of my big assessments is as much as I love the early on, of course, I was able to build some teams I wasn't able to before. I got the first pick, number 11, for the audio people. I'm not sure if we have audio people. So if you're not looking at your screen, I had the 11. Get used to the first 10 picks all being outfielders, which they were. I'm going to pivot. We're going to go to Spencer Strider, right? There's just a huge separation between Strider and the field, I feel like you really have to reach for the next outfielder, which is usually Kyle Schwarber. This one went Adolis Garcia. I'm going to go the other way. I generally put back, push back infielders a little bit. I'm trying to think how we attack this one. You know, at my ranks, you can't see them. I have Olsen, Bryce Harper, but I'm thinking about maybe going – with Luis Robert. No, let's go with the best player, man. Let's go to Olsen. I don't think I have a bunch of Olsen because, again, if you've listened to the other ones, if not, I mean, it's probably a bit to pull from them. The very first one we talked about a lot of macro strategy. I, I probably started the stream too early, and so we were BSing for a while before the drift popped off. That porridge was too cold. Uh, this one I popped off was already going. Maybe it's a little bit too hot. The last one might have been right in the middle. Right, We started maybe two or three people. We get to talk about how we use the format to our advantage and then really the player pool. So just briefly, because this stuff does really matter, and I really want to hammer it home. 20 rounds, three positional baskets, infield, outfield pitchers, no relievers. So outfield doesn't really change much, right? You're starting three infielders, three outfielders, a flex, three pitchers. What I'm getting at is a lot of fantasy leagues play with three outfielders. There are three outfielders in real life. So that is kind of the reason why they get pushed up because amalgamating, right? Combining catcher first, second, short, third, all together, that put them all on the blender opens up the player pool to everyday plate appearances in the very last rounds of the drafts. If you're drafting infielders, now I may have taken that a bit too far at first, going purely uh, infielder or purely. Pitching uh, at the end, always pushing up outfielders, always to the front. I have multiple drafts for my first like six. See, I was going to say seven outfielders. There's probably a little bowl to spin right now, or spinning bowls when we have to stop for a second to kind of rebuild the argument and branch. If you don't know what I'm talking about, remember the gong show? Da, 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 the circuit movies is playing. Guy, his name is Eric Bren, spinning bowls on sticks. And the idea being, Providing you come back to the bowl, you can keep it spinning for as long as you want, but you have to come back. And the same thing for ideas. So you can kind of leave them spinning, but you got to come back. So you'll see the second round littered with, with infielders. Austin Riley, Bryce Harper. Those guys are big-time players, and I see playing in this format. Again, 
it's points, not really standard, though it, it, I ran a lot of the correlations and it kind of is really like an OPS league. So if you're talking OPS, again, Harper, Austin Riley, or goats. So it is okay to go with the big infielder in the second like I just did. But what ends up happening, you got to leave some spaces, right? So I went too hard. Drafts that were all six, and then where I was getting at seven outfielders, that's the mistake. Not to say having seven outfielders is a mistake, but if you go six up front, you got to cut it. In fact, there might even be an argument that if you were to go first five, you should probably cut it. Because of the flex and all the injuries, I tend to not. I always want seven pitchers, which leaves, what, 13 hitters, which means six and seven. There's your answer why. If you go early outfielders, that should be six. Now, if I end up with another infielder in the next two or three picks, kind of unusual for me, then maybe that would be different if you slant the other way. But if you're going to put your chips in the middle of the outfielders, fill in with volume on the other side. Pitching, I don't think you can have enough pitching. And I've taken an other route. Maybe the next time we'll do that where, oh, I guess, you know what? Maybe we'll do it this time. Let's do it on the fly. We'll do it this time. So we're going to go. This is last time was a, uh, a hitter build, right? I'm not even sure if we pulled it off an outfielder build. Did I go all pitchers at the end last time? Maybe we did that already. I was going to say where you could, let's say you wanted to earn, quote unquote, the extra pitcher, if you, you could cut down a hitter, right? Go six, six, eight to compensate for pitching injuries. But then you really probably want all those hitters really up front, like almost probably 10 of the first 12. Now, me having Strider and Olsen, right, this is way off my usual path of outfielder first and then pitching. But you got to go at this different ways. I do all my own ranks, a lot of fantasy work. You can check me out on Twitter, at John Legiza. I probably should, like, is there a thing for that? It's probably going to go over my face. Probably. I don't know. I'm still learning. I'm not that smart. I think I, I, think I, I, think I sound smarter than I am. Anyway. My name is John Legaza, J-O-H-N-L-E-G-H-E-Z-Z-A, and that's the Twitter handle, X. You know, hit me up, pin tweets, got all kinds of information. I, I like to think I have a lot of good stuff. It's kind of my thing. Self-made and, you know, bad jokes and stuff like that. All right, we are back on the clock. I got Brian Reynolds up top, then Wheeler and Lopez. So you can see where I listen, Strider is an animal all to his own, but you can see why you can wait on a little bit of pitching because – Wheeler and Lopez are such goats. I'm going to go with my ranks and kind of go with the auto here. I've got Brian Reynolds queued up. He's had a great spring. He's a really good hitter. You know, he does a lot of the things that we that we want, right? You want an uh, important point. I walk through all the scoring. We don't want to do that every single time. But walks count the same as hits. So on base matters. Brian Reynolds has a great average anyway. But like homers and steals, I actually think that lineup is about to get a huge boost. We're back on the clock. I almost if it looks like I'm not paying attention, that's fine. I'm okay with that because my these ranks are constantly updated. Again, you get part of my data pack if it wants 10 bucks for the year, but I'm not trying to shill anything like that. We do want you to sign up for Underdog, the promo code MMN, match the first 100 bucks, hop in a couple of dingers. They have a couple of $3 drafts going on like that. I've got Wheeler, then Lopez. No, no, I don't know. I can't say no. I'm going to stick with the ranks. I got Wheeler up next, you know. So maybe we'll could just call this the uh, the best player draft. The you know, is that a, that's a football community thing, right? Draft the good players. Hat tip to Adam and those boys doing it awesome work at ETR. We're a dangle man, superstar stuff going on over there. All right, so we're looking pretty good, decent balance. Got in Reynolds. I'm outside of firmly outside of my comfort zone. I want you to see it happen. Not to say I'm sacrificing this draft because we don't know, but I am going to keep an eye on outfielders because. You know, I'm not pushing them up for my health, and I'm not even pushing them up, honestly, because the projections have them so far ahead. It's not the case. It runs out, and it runs out fast. I think the last draft we did, by round 16, people are drafting, like, part-time platoon players. Okay, let's be, let's be very, very, very clear about this. I said it's an OPS league, right? We mentioned, like, balance and roster construction and stuff like that. All of those things absolutely matter, right? Does the, it's be stupid to say they don't. Like butt, 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 like big shaking butt, right? Like the garden hose and the soapy water and like the, you know, southern wrappers and stuff. Butt, 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 You're not going anywhere with part-time players in this game. You're not going anywhere with part-time players. Maybe 
maybe I'll entertain, I'll entertain a few kind of like outliers at the very end of here. We're here giving names, you know me, you know Patty. We don't hire, we put the contact out front. Man, it's a rough slug, man. Nelson Velasquez for the Royals. He's a master, right? Those kind of guys, again, that could score in spikes because in best ball, no waivers, no trades. The scoring is kept on a weekly basis resets. Computer optimizes all the best scores. So players that are spiky are great, right? Even better than some flat players. But God like Velasquez. Excuse me one second. Or a guy like Matt Wallner of the Twins. Yeah, these guys can mash and get you like the nine home runs in a week. That's going to be huge. But they're a real threat of losing PAs. I think I like Wallner more than I like the last place. He's one of the buried names. Circle him as a elite outfielder. Maybe uh, Rafaela, who looks like he's going to get the job. Who looks like he earned a job in Boston. Excuse me. He'll probably be the everyday center fielder. That might take some PAs away from a guy like O'Neill. I don't know. He struggled with injuries already. The more you think about it, right, going back to what we mentioned earlier on, 30 teams, three outfielders, 90 outfielders. However, right, but, 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 get the, well, what happened to that boy? Um, how many of them are oh, legit starters, right? How many, of these, how many of the 90 are, you know, every single day? And that's it just runs out much faster than you think because we've had you know the inception of platooning utility guys kind of moving in and out it ends up shrinking that pool down from 90. We've got 12 people in the draft room, right? And we're saying everybody's going for six outfielders. Six times 12 is 72. So I didn't answer that number at first because that was up to you to answer it. Now you could say, like, wait, what? What if your answer was 68 or 69? 69, dude. What if your answer was 69? So there's only 69 like viable everyday kind of starters, right? Start worthy hitters. Again, there are guys like a Sturry Ruiz that get drafted. This. I'm not touching Sturry Ruiz, but your mother. I'm not touching I'm not touching a bit. Get me. No thanks. So right off the bat, even that pool, the pool's pool, you know, gets shrunk down. Again, why outfielders are always kind of pushed to the four. Not say you got to bet out of the box with six. I'm not doing it here, but we are going to we are going to have to focus on it. I think we're getting better at this drafting stuff. We're seeing I'm knocking down one at a time. Again, um, more just again, we're on the clock. I like my my rankings. I'm I do provide these as part of it. You can upload them and you're just gonna walk away and you're gonna have one of my teams. I don't know why I did that, but I did because I, I like to over deliver. Man, it's a really tough world. I also I come from nothing. So, like, I know it's a, it's a lot to ask for people for money. So, we're, we have um, Nick Castellanos. Absolutely love that. You know, he's like a 35 homer or 12 steal kind of guy. Um, he was pretty good last year, and that's the bounce back, right, after the big contract. So, I think Castellanos could be excellent. Good outfielder, too. What I wanted to get at, though, was the pitching, right? So, had you waited on pitching, right, if you were saying to yourself – what if I wait on pitching? What does that look like? Well, we're at the very end of the fifth. We're technically in the sixth. Remaining pitchers, Tyler Glass now, George Kirby, Blake Snell. Those are my top guys on my pitching list. So there's pitching here. That's why I think you could wait. Again, I think Strider is the unique scenario. Looking back, maybe I could have passed on Zach Wheeler. I really love Zach Wheeler. I think he has a chance to be the number one overall. And that's why you need different builds. Again, this is a $10 draft. What if it's 100 k baby? Baby, baby, you know, hop on in, use the code MMM Mayo Media Network. They're gonna match you hundred bucks, man. I want to, I want to go off. From, okay, my next one. So I've got a couple of Cubs. I've got Seiya Suzuki up next. He's looked really good this spring, and I think again, you hear me talk about that a lot. Um, right, we talk about expectations and trajectory. I actually like the show because it's so fast moving that I don't get to go into my spreadsheets or all the nerdy stuff. If you want that, we'll be here with this show Monday through Friday. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, the Dog. We'll be rocking and rolling, baby, baby. Baby, baby. Getting paid in the shade, laid like an egg. You know what I'm saying? Doing underdog parlays. And then, again, we're going to just – so the show will be not like my other ones where I covered every game a million miles an hour. What this will be is we're going to – I'm going to piece together a parlay, but we're going to highlight, you know, all the stuff. Dog Sheep up in the room. Yo, man, what's going on? Thank you for jumping in live. I'll tell you what, if you can, we could link up again. There's only a couple of days. 
But anybody not following Dark Sheep, make sure you're following him and Puma and all the underdog crew. You know me, I'm here to kind of ele I like to elevate. So Dark Sheep doing great work. And my man, get up in the Twitter DMs if you want to jump in for one. Dinger is running out, but I'm down for a bullpen. If you'd like, anytime, hit me up, we'll schedule it. And then we got Brad, WGM, John on the end. And you'd love to see it, Brad. Thank you so, so much, man. Really do appreciate it. Right, man, right back by popular demand. I like to think we have a very kind of engaging audience. I, you know what it is, yo? I just don't BS people, right? You're not getting it for me. I'm real. I play. I study. I work really hard. At the work, the, the games, but then at the content creation part itself, you know, to really open up and try and give people digestible, entertaining, and interesting stuff to go with. And, you know, man, enough people got those comments is how you do it, man. You know, pressing like buttons, stick your corporate finger right up inside me. Oh! <gasps> You know what I mean? You're pressing bells, you're pressing buttons, you're just smashing stupid things on a screen, and it matters because we're in like this algorithmic world where, again, I honestly mean this. Brad says he subbed last year. Wave wire picks are worth it alone. Thank you very, very much. That also is part of the data package. I was sitting there pumping it. You get all this like data and ranks. I have translations for the best ball sites, so you can go on my stuff. You get underdog projections per plate appearance and total. But I also have my own underdog rankings you can upload. But yeah, it comes to the waiver stuff. I, I think this is a big one to have. Listen, this is what I do. You just have somebody that's got their ear to the ground. That you get an email every week, and it's like, yes, you know, you're not going to miss on those big picks. And some weeks you're good. Look, I get it. You know, a lot of people are in 10, 12 team leagues, and you're not always adding. But we all know, especially if you're competing, when you lose a player and you need to fill in, I like to think I'm right there. You know, again, mayor filling the void. So what do we got? Promo code is MMN. It's up there in the corner. That's going to match the hundred bucks. Don't spend it all on drafts, people, because we want to we want to make some money in the uh, in the in the prop moment. You know, we're going to do these parlays. We're going to watch. We're going to do a lot. We're going to do a lot of learning. We're going to do a lot of understanding, and hopefully, we're going to do a lot of money making. I have found I love sites like Underdog that allow you to parlay. Remember, they allow you to parlay without like the odds are not really adjusted. So they give you a set parlay. So those. Picks have a price. The reason that matters is that gives you a benchmark to beat. So we kind of have the price knowing going into the store. All right, we are back on the clock. Again, uh, if you've noticed, I have not done much stressing at all. Why I have my own personal ranks? They're available as well. But I, I, this, this game moves very, very, very fast. So you don't want to overreact. You want to understand the landscape. I said where the outfielders are going to go and how we're going to pick up on them again. What does the pitching look like? Bobby Miller is still good. Logan Gilbert, Zach Ethel is still really good. But now the outfielders are going. I'm going to take the top player on my board, outfielder Jordan Walker for the Cardinals, looking for a step up. Right, I mentioned trajectory earlier on. Yes, we all love projections, huge projections. Well, I'm back on the clock. James Outman went, who I also really, really like. Man, I've got... I've actually got a bunch of pitchers in here now. I think that's where I'm going to go. They're just really, they're just too good. Bobby Miller, I can't say no. I can't say no to Bobby Miller. So right now we're looking pretty strong. We we've got Strider, Zach Wheeler, Bobby Miller as far as pitchers. I want to make a point right here, right? Spinning balls. The corner music is playing. We are spinning balls on sticks. There's 20 freaking balls flying, and I'm running around again. I, I sometimes I could be well, this is a brash. I can always be brash. I'm always like kind of obnoxious. That's my point. You want to come in steadfast, right? I have an understanding of the player pool and the construction, how I want my positional stuff to lay out because I know that there are a lot of infielders available at the end. That's a piece of information that you just can't, you just can't eye roll. Now at a point, there's a couple of interesting pictures. Then again, don't put your too much faith in these fantasy. You know, helium guys. I love them too. You know, I love Carter Crawford. I do. I think Joe Boyle could be awesome. Again, we don't want to rely on these guys. Savali is available at the back end. He's probably a little more of a steady Eddie, right? There are good pitchers. There are good outfielders. Uh, infielders, excuse me. There are good pitchers and good infielders. There are no outfielders at all. But here's that the ball that we were just on. Having a pitching staff like this, like I really landed on. I mean, I know I, I ranked them, so I'm supposed to like my ranks. But Strider, Wheeler, and Miller have a chance to be the one, two, three. I, that's also how I like to draft pitchers. I don't let's say I don't like distance guys. Quality starts matter, wins matter. Logan Webb, Fran Valdez, looking at you. 
But I really would rather the impact, especially when they come on really good teams, right? The Braves are going to win games for Strider. The Phillies are going to win games for Wheeler. The Dodgers are going to win games for um, Miller. You know, that, that stuff absolutely matters. Again, in this one, something I should have mentioned earlier with the pitching scoring, there's no there's no punishment. Jen, I'm going to get you right now. <laughs> there's no punishment for base runners just for earned runs. And once you hear that immediately, it means Dylan Cease, Blake Snell, right, can go up. We mentioned it last time, lack of control can end up stunting the possibility of getting to the six innings in the quality start. But when you've got the stanky filth like they do and they go late enough, it's okay. Jen, Jen, Jen Joseph says, Birdman, <laughs> did a man job, did my first dress last night, loving the breakdown. Jen Joseph touching me right there. And look, the comments popped up and moved me out of the way. Look at me. You think I know what I'm doing here? Appreciate it, man. You know, very few people bring bring it like I, I do. And I know that. And it's not, again, but we do life lessons as we're doing understanding, right? So there's always that bowl is always spinning too. It means a lot to me that the information and the lessons that we talk about are the types of things that may resonate outside of a draft room. When we talk about opportunity cost and paying premiums and what it means to sacrifice for later on for a bigger picture view, right? The things that really, really, really matter. These are the things that will help you make better decisions in your real life, which again, are going to make you a better player and lead you more money, but it's going to make you better decision, make you make better decisions outside, which will load up that account number, you know, which is really what it's all about at the end. So generally that stuff matters so, so much to me. I know, you know, get up in the comments, let us know how we're doing. Take Patty on social media, let her know how we're doing it. You're having a lot of fun with these drafts. I mean, it almost fills the air time. Like I can find himself. So it's insane. Right? I just absolutely love it. Let's get back to the draft. For people following, like I thought we were trying to make money at underdog one. We 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 are. We are. And hopefully we're gonna I love the hundred dollar match from the first deposit people. Be smart, right? Watch one or two of our drafts here. Look at the boards. You can always hit me up. You can check out my ranks. I'm, I'm here for you, right? And again, I'm, well, I'm the type, if you show the extra effort, listen, I'm not here to take your money. I'm, I'm going to help you, right? That's how I do. And the one thing I do ask, though, sometimes if, if you if you have good questions, <laughs> some people ask bad questions, if you have good questions, you hit me up on Twitter in public. That's, uh, it's not that I don't want to put my time into you. It's just the opposite. If it's beneficial, we we want to share it with everyone, right? That's the idea I mentioned, the rising tides. All right, so we're up in a few picks. Okay, I, I was sweating my own pitching staff. Strider, Wheeler, Miller looking really strong. The one infielder, Matt Olson, which, again, I like. If you know that there are infielders at the end that you're going to be able to build around, you still want to uh, really have a superstar up front. So I've been leaning towards that. Though I am backloading, I'm not putting it all off because – but let's not confuse Matt Olson is better than Ty France. I mentioned Ty France because he's a guy that I like in the last rounds. Number three, Henry went the drive line. Good team, plays every single day, right? All the things that we're looking for in the last round pick. We're at three pitchers, one infielder, four outfielders. That's Reynolds, Castellanos, Suzuki, Jordan Walker. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. We're going to go back to the outfielder. Well, again, I'm just deciding. I've got Jung Uli, Eloy Jimenez, and Jaron Duran. I want to add some who Lee to my portfolio. And I'm I'm hoping one of the other two, Eloy or Duran, make it back. Now I wanted to bring it up. I told I told myself I wasn't gonna do we weren't gonna do any stats. This is not like the time and the place. But I, I can't help it. Because I I thought he was going nuts. Yeah, Jung Hu Lee is batting <laughs> batting 414 with a thousand OPS. He's got a homer and two steals. Again, um, think what you want about homers in spring training. Steals kind of matter. We also want to make sure this guy's not overmatched. They paid the Giants paid him. They're looking to be competitive. So, like, who Lee could be the, an everyday leadoff guy that you're getting pretty late. The player at the turn went with Merrill Cully. So, we're getting one of our guys. Then he went Muncy. We get a, a, a choice. Eloy Jimenez with the big ceiling. Jaron Duran, probably a little more of a steady Eddie. We've got Reynolds, Castellanos, Suzuki, Walker, Huli. The reason I mentioned, right, you always want to see if you, when you're making these coin flip decisions, if you can pair, right, there's nothing wrong with that. 
All right, I get. I think I'm gonna go Jack with Duran. I'm gonna go with Duran. I don't want to. I've been. This is just personal. I've been drafting, um, Eloy. So it's not that I necessarily have Duran much further than him, but we all know the thing with Eloy. He already missed games. You know, and a guy like him is so enticing. It's so tempting to be like, if we get the 600 plate appearance season from Eloy. He's got the tools to be the lead winner, right? That's that's a fact. We need to look at them in this way. All right, let's take a second while we're rounding the bases. I'm gonna still run my mouth, but I'm gonna pay some pay some bills, or I'm not because I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, there I am. No, that's not what I was that's not what I was trying to do. Oh yeah, yeah. What the heck, man? All right, let's see if I can figure this thing out. Oh, here we go. There it is. All right, there it is. You must be 18 to play. Present in present in a state where underdog operates. Terms apply. Make sure you're checking all that stuff. Call one eight hundred gambler if you have a problem. I actually got a little um, a little ticker. I think yeah, that I thought I was going to do. All right, so there we go. Just um, want to make sure again. You know, it's funny this age of gambling now. You know, in like legalization and availability that's important that we we stop all the time and and talk about that sometimes right that and i hate all that i hate all the, the tropes right because that's a good way to get yourself into trouble to like think you know because you memorized a couple of like phrases you know um uh, only gamble what you can lose something like that Which again it's you know it's a good idea but I'd like to challenge you a little bit further. So let's just talk about risk really quick, people. You know, and this even goes for underdog, right? So you signed up, you put in the 100, they match the 100, you look at a 200. Very easy to just say, all right, I'm going to blow two drafts. Well, there's different ways to approach it, right? You could watch, look, and study first, have a plan. Maybe before you do the $10 ding or for the 100K, maybe you jump into the $3 bullpen. I think the winner is 2K or 5K, maybe 5K, but the pool is much smaller. It's 16 weeks of the regular season, everybody. The top two teams advance, which, again, why answers a lot of – if you were wondering, like, a lot of the assertions I made before are answered by that. You know, when I mentioned be wearing uh, platoon players, right, or guys without ceilings, pitchers that are not going to get quality stuff to wins. You know, the needle-moving stuff. Is uh is really big. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. I was talking about um preparation before execution is more important than telling people don't just you know don't if you don't care about the money like you could just kind of lose it and and that really should never be the case. Mark, hey, what's going on, man? Thank you so much for joining on the stream here, Mayo Media Net. I remember seeing a player win a million. Oof. He appreciated the max out a lot of contests. Later, he disappeared. Anyway, this stuff happens. That stuff happens. I, I believe it or not, you know. Uh, listen, I'll be the first person to tell you, money does not buy happiness. I'm much happier with. Uh, I, it's weird. Like I have less. I'm not flashy. I wear like black t-shirts and stuff. Drive like modest car, but like I own everything that I have. Right? Don't, I don't live in debt. You probably get that from the way that I talk and act. And for young people, especially, or people in trouble, that's the first thing you should do. Oh, that's a pretty decent time to the rest of them. Right about. Understanding before you execute, let's make our two draft picks, and I'll do my, my favorite risk lesson, absolute favorite risk lesson. So let's see. We're at three pitchers, an infielder, and six outfielders. Because we didn't get an outfielder until pick 35, this could be a seven outfielder team. But I see my boy uh, Tanner Bybee is up there. And that's where I think I'm going to go. I really like Bybee. I'm going to keep solidifying – Pitching staff again, right? Cleveland very good at developing young pitchers by becoming off a really good season, really strong season. I'm hoping I got my friend. I didn't want to say, "What? Oh, Billy over what? I didn't want to say it. I don't think I had the corner was listening, but he got me. I what? That's where I was going to go. Was Bailey over? That was the next on mine. I was actually deciding. Now I'm actually looking. I've got next up. I've actually got the going last outfielder. We're going to go Captain Jack Swinsky. No, I mean, you know, this is like a right again, like I said, every day, potential 35 homers, 
He also might steal 15 bags. He's also young, and there's room for growth, right? We've been tying in all the trajectory stuff. So here's the risk lesson. Most important thing you can do. Little harder to apply with drafting and best ball drafts. But a three dollar price point for bullpen when you get a hundred for dollars is is manageable. But this to the betting stuff, props, I, I'm trading, right? I have a, that's kind of where I come from. If you're familiar, I have a background in derivatives trading. We started a futures trading company a long time ago. It's defunct, but it's it's very high speed. So it's high speed cash leverage. You know, fully liquid market, and it's just lightning fast. And you understand a lot about leverage really quick, man. I lost more money than I care to admit in uh, in just a second. Jen, really up and coming, one of my favorite listeners right now, says bankroll management is so underrated. Check this out. Let's see if you've heard this one before. Again, like, when you ask yourself, why did the, the big casinos hire like these total meatballs and morons? Yeah, why? Because they want your freaking money, yo. <laughs> you know, but I'm, honestly, and I, to be honest, I've had this conversation in, in behind the scenes. That you know, I've been told they're not really interested in the kind of better I'm going to bring in. Right, books are not interested in the kind of better I'm going to bring in. Right, somebody that's again, we're killers, right? We're killers, and we're happy about that. Right, we're, we're degenerate in the best way. Right, we're thirsty for knowledge. We're obsessed with success. We back test. We're plus EV betters, and we have a, a, a risk plan. So what I like to do, Jen, is call the combine. John, see, I see you. Thank you so much. You can't see me. Um, is the combine. And I learned this as a young man in derivatives trading, and it goes to sports betting times 10. Of all the feed comments and advice I've ever given, it's probably the one that's gotten the most positive feedback. Is just before you go live, and this we can do, right? Because remember that the promo cash, we don't want to treat, we're happy, we appreciate it. MMN is the code up there in the core. But it's not to be lost. Like we're going to treat it as money, right? You got to be careful. Some people write easy comes to go. We don't want to be that way. We want to. We want to cherish it, right? We want to. That money counts. Okay, we're going to treat it as if we put in two hundred. But what you should do before you put a single dollar of any of your own money in is one, come up with a plan, and then two, try and execute that plan. Notice, no mention of funding an account, okay? Because sports betting is very hard, right? There's also a million opportunities, so there's no rush. It's like, stop. You don't have to rush. Oh, my God, you don't have to get in the market. It's here tomorrow. It's here the next day. It's literally infinite opportunities, okay? So what you should do is prove to yourself, prove to me, right? Who cares what I think? What I think at 250 gets you on the bus over here. But you prove to yourself that you can be profitable. Okay, and the, the problem is the pushback again is like as if like what if you what as if like what if you make a million dollars in the first week? Guess what? You're not going to make a million dollars first week. The chances are going to fall flat in your face the first like five times. That's generally about the average of challenge yourself. Can you be profitable over 14 days or 30 days on paper betting demo cash? Right, uh, hundred dollars Yankees, one ten ML, da 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 da. Lynn to want to strike out, whatever, whatever the hell it may be. And after a week, if you could show that you were profitable, then you say, "All right, I'm going to go live." Guess what? It's negative. Reset. Negative, it's reset. And that's usually what happens is it takes people three, four, five whirls, and they come back to me and go, dude, you just saved me three binds. Now, it's not just the money. Again, I don't want the money. That emotional confidence that you get, look, I'm looking at the board right now. I'm talking over this draft, totally. But, man, Matt McLean, you got to fix your, you gotta fix your, your, your ranks, my friend. Matt McLean, he can't be a 12th round pick. He's going to miss a ton of time. Cody Sanger cannot be a 13th round pick. He's going to miss a ton of time as well. All right, we're up in a couple picks. Let me address John's question. John actually asking a relevant question. I'm like, what are, what are you doing? We're trying to keep us on topic here. What's the matter? You know, Johnny, thank you so much, man. appreciate you. Johnny says, what's been your favorite roster construction? I've been landing on a lot of 776. Is this fantastic? We did, we covered this in detail, so I'll just do it quickly. I think you – I was – okay. The number should depend on the how you put the capital. I find you always want seven pitchers because they're always hurt. Meaning, like, even if you were to draft six pitchers up top, I, I, you're still going to get injured. So, yeah, I, I also have done normally seven, six, sevens. But for me, the seven isn't automatic pitchers. The seven, six for the hitters is where I differentiate depending on where I invested. Oh, no, I'm starting to see my rankings get used against me. A couple of guys I have ahead of the market just went, 
So Cabrian Hayes, one of the infielders that I really, really liked. Isaac Fernandez, one of the infielders that I really, really, really liked. Both off the clock, both off the board in front of me while I'm on the clock. Oh, sigh. But you remember, right? You, you can't get upset. Oh, I actually got a good one for you right here. I This was more something we covered briefly on the last one. Now, the idea of infielders consolidating because it's just an I and F position of all those positions consolidating and giving you more options, which is why there are more infielders later on. I was bashing catchers, but, but, but again, the burden. What happened to that boy? What happened to him? He got disease out there with the guard nose. His car is bouncing for a distance. Soapy water everywhere. You, there are some catchers, but it's got to come down to plate appearances. So, again, it's not like I'm it's like, oh, well, you could take the top three catchers. No. No, TJ Friedel just went. TJ Friedel's going to be out for a while. I don't think I'm going to go on that route, but I think it also speaks to the weakness of the outfielders. All right, so I'm really stoked. I'm getting my... I'm getting my guys. Let me just make sure I'm going to go with another. Yeah, I'm going to go with another infielders. We got, we're at four. Top pitchers are Harrison Fott, Miller Gore, Bayo. All right, I'm going to go one more infielder just because we kind of see this as a starter. And I'm going to go with Jake Berger. <laughs> so to the catcher thing, you generally do not want to draft catchers in this format, but. If they have a pathway to 600 plate appearances via the DH, then you can. So people love Will Smith in this format. I do not. I have no Will Smith. Zero. What? The Dodgers brought in Shohei Otani, and I don't think he's going to get the necessary plate appearances to get there. It's going way too high. I drafted William Contreras. Bit of a different story. Number one, he's an on-base machine. Two, Great hitting environment. Number three, though, he's likely to DH on his off days. So if you can get a player like that, he's every bit as good as, you know, he's a better hitter than most of the second baseman, let's say. So just a little – now, I like to cover my contradictions, right? You talk as much as I do, you're eventually going to go against yourself. Outfielders again. Now you're seeing this last push. This is what I mentioned earlier on. I had said, I said round 16 earlier. We're right now in round 14, and I feel like it's it's happening, which is, you know, gosh, we're done. I'm gonna, we're done. We that's why I mean we we have our we have our seven. You know, so obviously I'm not worried, but I want to give you an idea of the outfielders on the left. I mean, it's Chris Bryant. I, listen, I, I I understand, like, the dream on Chris Bryant. I get it, but, right, wrong side of 30. It's been a while. The injuries are crazy. The hitting environment, of course, there. I'll give it up. And it's new bar banged up. I mean, and St. Louis is kind of crowded. And Story Ruiz, they've even mentioned just recently, the most recent piece of news was his role could be uh, in jeopardy. The next one I had just went, that's Parker Meadows. So this is a perfect example of how players move. Parker Meadows was like a last-round pick or worse. Now he's going in the 14th. He was one of the last kind of oasis is back there. Let me get the Mark's comments. Mark, lighten up the board. 50-50 um, last year in NBA. Yeah, it could be tough at the end. you got to be careful. You know, I like to go with volume if I can. I also like to predetermine. This is another good risk lesson. People get in trouble with units because when they like more bets in one day than they did the other, they tend to bet too much, right? So if you're a hundred dollar better and you like three bets on Tuesday and eight bets on Thursday, that's a tremendous disparity. I don't really like to have that much disparity in a more of a fluent, uh, fluid system. So I like to assign a percentage risk percentage of total, right? So if you assign a unit as a percentage of risk, well, you can never lose a hundred units because at a hundred units, you have a, you know, your things are tied up in a bandana and you're, Carrying bag of oranges on the side of the freeway, right? So when you see, well, I'm down 300 units, I bet 50 units. Well, 50 units in my world would be half of your stack. You're never going to do that. For baseball, in case we want to plug in some real numbers, I know people come here for helpful stuff, hopefully. I don't like to go beyond 2.5%, even lower, 2%. Two, listen, you will get waxed on 2%. It's a lot. So for me, it's between 1.5% and 2%. And then you divide backwards, right? So where people people find plays, and that's the amount that they bet. Of course, I do everything backwards. 
I, I like to set the amount and then work backwards. So in theory, for example, let's say we're paying a unit. So if we had a um, $1,000, right, 1% 1 is $10. If you had two plays, you'd have five of each. You know, so I want to have that number set. And then that way, I mean, now listen, it can be tough to be a volume better if you only have $10. This is a reality, right? That part I can't really help you with because places have limits. You see the cut in the pictures I was naming start to fly off the board, and there's a reason for Dugo, the outfielders, no thanks. But Kyle Harrison, Brandon Fott are now 15th round picks, and it's getting really, really tough. You know, it's getting really, really tough in these streets. People are you know, people are watching these videos or using my ranks, and I get it. I get it. I make these things to be used against me, you know, to a certain extent. But the cream ends up really kind of continually rising um, to the top. So, yeah, working backwards from a daily, a lot of risk is a very good way to succeed in sports betting. Mark K had a 20K lineup in May. Beautiful, baby. You know, sometimes, especially in this hole, we'll get back to you in a second. There's yeah, really good stuff that you're, you're touching on. So our in, outfielders are closed, which I love, right, because we're taking care of one thing at a time. Bayo and Miller went in front of us. I want to pull my freaking hair out because that was like a lot of the back end of my pitching that I was hoping to rely on. Is going, but again, you know, we we kind of knew that that could be the case. So I've got Mackenzie Gore up next. We're gonna go Mackenzie Gore and look for a breakout with the swing and miss stuff. And again, we're reaching, but I'm gonna need my guys because I invested early. Strider, Wheeler, and Miller would need them to do a lot of heavy lifting, right? Mackenzie Gore is not like an every week lockdown kind of starter. It's not really like that for him right now. So you have to hope for the pop starts, which again he could get because he's got a lot of swing and miss stuff. Really highly touted prospect. Coming off a healthy season, like a lot of things in place, right? We saw that from Giolito, we saw from Robbie Ray. There are pictures of Robbie Ray, Bubba, my buddy Bubba made that comp. I want to give him credit for that. So, up next, they're gonna be a five pitchers, three infielders. That's where I think I want to go. I've got a few guys up here. I think we got on base machine Luis Arias and then Nolan Gorman. I'm gonna go the other way, I'm gonna go with the upside of Gorman. Right, Gorman went what 25 and 7 last year. He's got a chance to go 30 10. He's the fourth infielder. Right, so there's kind of how we look at it, right? So we invested early in Olsen. Now, because you spent so much capital on Olsen, means you may not need to get that seventh infielder, right? So I have the seventh outfielder in this case because I didn't take one. Early on. So that was kind of to Mark's question, what you were mentioning before. A lot of people ask about roster construction. My, if you're asking me, my limits are set at 767. But like I said, how that, those, the shell game, right? How those cups get maneuvered will depend on where I've drafted earlier on. Cutter Crawford just went me. So that was a guy that was available in the 20th round or undrafted for the majority of. Of draft season. And that's the trade-off from not playing early. You know, right? You can't have everything. People that drafted in January, when this contest first opened, had access to lots of players that they don't know. The problem is, if you had Cody Senga and Kyle Bradish, guess what? You're in a lot of trouble. If you're like me and you have Yuri Perez on every single team, you're a lot less excited. Because you have guys that could be out for a long time. I had a ton of Matt McLean and Yuri Perez. So, you know, I understand the two sides of the coin here. You know, I totally get that where you want to be early. You want to beat the CLV. You want to beat the market. But at the same time, the board and the pool is so finite. It's very difficult to eat zeros where you're almost better up against a tougher CLV, a tougher market, but knowing that you could draft 20 healthy players. Now, again, if I'm looking at the outfields, I'm not trying to trash anybody in this room. There's a lot of players in here that are smaller than I am. The thing, oh man, AJ Puck just went. So all of the final guys that you'd be hoping to get to wrap up that we were going to be looking at are gone. I wanted to look at the outfielders. Perfect example of my gosh, Mitch Hanniger, I you can't rely on Mitch Hanniger in, in underdog best ball. It's not that's not there. You know, I think that those days have passed. The Giants keep bringing in more players, and they're obsessed with platooning. I think Lee is the only one that is going to play 
every single day. Maybe Chapman on the Giants also. The defense will keep him. He's an excellent defender at third. But really tough sledding if you wait on outfield. Then again, it's the pool is small, and then you have you know got people like me that are pushing people up so far. Again, remember the, the higher up you take the higher players, the less of an overpay it is. So I'm almost accept so I'm kind of accepting a premium market. But by the time I'm out, I've left the true premiums behind because you still need to fill up. So you have to you just drafted Lawrence Newpar. You just left drafted, drafted Brian De La Cruz. You just drafted Joe Manessas. These guys have have floors that are zero. Right, new bar is constantly hurt. New bar is also at risk of, of getting like platoon in and out. The Cardinals have outfielders. You know, um, Victor Scott, right, is knocking on the door. Edmund is going to be back. And if Gorman's good at second and Win Mason Wynn is good at short, Edmund's going to find his way back into the outfield. It just becomes crowded. Right, why we were prioritizing – Every day, every day, every day at bats, right? Every day at bats with OPS. I actually had, when I took Nolan Gorman, it was over Eugenio Suarez, who was the next infielder after me. So let's see if we can devise a plan. We'll see how this comes out. We have five pitchers and four infielders. And again, seven outfielders So that. Bin is closed. You can't go to eight, right? Especially, even if you didn't pay up, up, up in the first round, you don't want to go to eight. This to, may be the Mark's question below. Man, I got to thank everybody for in the comment section. This is really, really cool. Jen, don't worry about it. Give it, you give up on NFL, you stick with us, MLB. We're going to have a fantastic time. Wait until you just follow my work. Wait until we get into this, the under strikeout market. So I don't know if anyone saw this. I, I've had multiple professional betters, multiple professional betters tell me the ticket that I posted was the biggest parlay hit by odds they ever seen by far. I think. And the, the, the market itself is only like a couple weeks old. So I drew up a quick model. Again, I used maybe a different wave, sign wave than the books do. The books are not that smart when it comes to baseball prop betting. They'd rather put out a bad line, have smart people bet it, limit you and change the number or pull it down than like put the work in to make sure. Anyway, was it 11,000 to one, right? I think I put a dollar into 11, 11K. <laughs> I honestly don't even recommend that kind of play. I was built again, I was building a new model. You put in all this work, the thing spits out 11 names. I could have even thrown the 11 names in a garbage or I could bet a dollar on them. And if they hit that, I, you know, betting on players to not strike out, there are some players that get a uh, plus 200 to not strike out. It's really awesome stuff. Okay, so we're up again, four infielders and Seven outfielders. So pitchers, I'm looking at Pepio. I'm going to actually go the other route. I'm going to go with infielders. I got my boy Edward Julien for the Twins. I actually really like uh, Julien, right? So we got some prospect shine, kind of a 2020 guy throughout the minors. He's also a 300 career hitter throughout the minors. The Twins traded Jorge Polanco away. And Julian's having like a like a monstrous spring right now. Again, we don't want to overreact to it, but uh, but what we do like we like that they traded. You know, we do like that they traded uh, Polanco. Yeah, he's batting three thirty three, two homers and a steal, tons of walks. He's always on base. Again, this is that's a good one for this one. So we're up again. Five five pitchers infield. This we can go either way. I've got either Andrew Vaughn in the infield or. Pepio, so I think that's the route we're going to go. I think I'm going to... No, no, let's go with Vaughn. Again, top three every day. Uh, the more I've been, uh, the more I've looked at Pepio, the more worried I've been. I am really starting to get concerned with volume. Uh, again, I was trying to... I keep telling myself I need more, like, doing stats. And I'm the first person to fly in the face of, like, injury projections and inning projections. But they, they matter a little bit, right? They matter a little bit. So Pepio had 64 innings last year total. Triple A and the majors, 120 before that, 90 before that, and 23 before that. So there's not a lot of work there. And if he does stay healthy for the Rays, who are waiting for pitchers also to come back, right? Shane Boz is on the shelf. They've got guys coming back. There's a chance Pepio just gets played around with. You know, we you got to be realistic. Again, I I'd love to say, oh, look at the stuff. They you know they're gonna run him out there every five days. Yeah, for the beginning of the season. 
the reason teams do this is they know there's such a high percentage of these guys getting hurt. And they'll, like, deal with it afterwards. But a lot of these teams do actually have a plan on paper. Like, if Pepio gets near a buck 40 or a buck 50, we're probably going to cap it. You know, especially Rays have uh, playoff expectations and hopes. So you got to do that, put that stuff in the calculus. My God, the pitching is getting really, really, really ugly. Really ugly. Paul Skeens drafted. He's not going to start with the club. If you have a really good team and you think he'll be up, he could be the shot of arm that makes it through the playoffs. Like, I understand the pick, but you still got to be number two to get there. Right? In order for him to help you in the playoffs, you've got to be second. Josiah Gray, man, home run machine. Walker Bueller, he's on the shelf. Lance Lynn, he's had his struggles. And Juan Rodriguez, he's on the shelf. J.P. Sears with the A's. I like J.P. Sears. How many wins and quality starts are you going to get with the A's? I'm not sure. I like Sears. I like Sears. But it's a tough sell. And we're really, really seeing the uh, the difficulty in this in this market, right? How tough these drafts become at the end. Just trying to find so yeah, like great players, right? We just what we really want is um, playing time. So I like to think we've done a pretty good job of that, right? When I told you at the outset, we were gonna it you had to play every day, you had to be in the top three. We're hoping for a good offense. You know, Matt Olson, check, William Contreras, Brewers, check, Jake Berger, check, Nolan Gorman, check. Although Nolan Gorman may not be top of the order. It's gonna be interesting to see um how that plays out. I'm not exactly sure. I probably man, for me, he's probably uh, well I projected he's three. That's what I was I was gonna say maybe five. But yeah, he could be in for Five, dog sheep, I will boy. On Bueller, I've been loving stashing Bueller if I have a solid other six pitchers at the price. See, I, I, it's kind of what I was alluding to. Um, Sheep, obviously, super sharp, knows this stuff. Where I think we need to build off it, though, is – right, right, I guess, I guess right. they, they got to be really, really good. So the part he mentioned that I agree with is you need six pitchers that are good. The other thing that I want to say is I don't think you can have another stash, I meaning not even a hitter stash. Right, so I wouldn't have Bueller and Jason Dominguez. Let's say if there's a he's kind of the hitter stash that comes to mind. I'm not really looking to stash anybody, and I, I get it. Like I totally get it because because of what I said. If you get your team into a competitive spot and you get a shot in the arm with a high end pitcher, as other people are losing them, you're adding them. That could definitely be the thing that gets you over the top. But for me, one one and one only, and that's like if I get to one. The sheep would probably agree. You know, you got to be very careful. Again, if you're not following him and uh, baseball, but baseball and Espanol, B E I S B O L, you got to follow these guys. Super sharp, really, really helpful. And uh, baseball, in particular, the graphs and stuff is out of control. But they're very best ball, under, underdog centric. And just listening to other people that understand and play the game will really help you kind of form your thoughts. All right. I should probably get looking at my player list because, again, it's not as um, – you know, these drafts are not as automatic as they used to be. You know, I quite literally used to um, put them on auto and kind of walk away. Again, you know, check me out on Twitter, John Legaza, at John Legaza. Pin tweet. One of the parts of the data is I have all the format and stuff. I also color-coded it with their wonky colors. But the idea is you could just upload it and run it, and I'm – Messing with it every day, so I'm constantly I'm pulling out all the injuries. I'm dropping all the losers, guys that are losing jobs or losing all these guys. Really, really helpful. Again, I am obsessive compulsive at least a little bit. You might have those tendencies. I get really upset. Like order picking a, a loser is for me the whole draft second waste. Even though it's not the case, like like Sheep said, you could get an order pick on an injury guy. And who's to say? Now, again, he you notice he mentioned price, which I think is very important. The price he paid for Bueller is not the price that person paid for Matt McLean, which is way too early for a guy that could be out for months and has now shown uh, real kind of, you know, struggles to stay on. Logan O'Hoppy gets drafted. He's another one of the catchers that I probably think about. I, the, my thing is, I think Trout gets the, the DH appearances. Logan O'Hoppy is the qual kind of quality hitter that could. But again, right, you're really not looking for catchers. So we're at five pitchers. Uh, six infielders, seven outfielders. So our infield is closed, right? That was why I wanted Vaughn because I wanted to close my infield. And we could just go with pitchers now. Let's see. Um, I'll just read them out. 
I give you an idea of like the late round guys that I, that I kind of like. Pepe you know, had last and less a look, right? When you, it's, there's no better feeling than uh, waiting on a player and have them come all the way around. But from the 11th slot, what are the chances they go around the long way? So Pepe goes right in front of me. I'm looking at Andrew Abbott, big upside on a per-game basis. Of course, we don't like half the starts in Cincinnati, but the big the stuff is there. I got Canning. I've got Aaron Savale. Okay, I'm going to actually go outside my rankings. I'm going Savale. The reason I'm going Savali is I have the top side stuff there, right? You know, Strider is the top side. Bobby Miller, top side. Even Mackenzie Gore, right? Playing for the spikes. Savali is more of a quality start guy, right? So I'm hoping that, again, you're not going to be able to figure this out. You can't quantify it to the point of, you know, the point of um, you're going to know. That's about always going to throw a quality start on the week that Strider's not good. But you're hoping that, you know, guys that are solid six-inning types with a good team and a good organization, he's showing a little bit. And I don't know if you anybody saw this, the book on um, – okay, so let me take my last guys. I was looking at Abbott or Canning. Or I'm, I'm going to go Canning over Abbott and avoid the ballpark. Hopefully the winged lion, Griffin Canning, can come through for us. So that's it. We're – Wrapped up with our picks. Let me just see a couple of um, the comments. This is our boy, Baseball. Appreciate the shout-out, John. Love seeing you back on the UD streets. Yo, my man, I told you, no, I didn't know you were in, the, in there. But I, I I, try to make it a habit to really, really elevate, right? Not like, a, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not doing nothing for your following. I'm not doing it. Right, not that helpful. But, but, but I mean, it, right? The people that care are part of that, what do they call it, a community or the industry or whatever, whatever it is. It's just this thing of ours, right, that they understand. Right? You know, I don't, I don't want to knock you down. Like, in theory, are we competition? I don't know, maybe. I don't care. I just don't care. To me, life is better, right? And in part, you probably all agree with Cheap because you guys talk about this stuff. Elevating the game, right? We want the game more popular. When the game is more popular, it's going to reach the other hundreds of millions of people out there. And there's enough for everybody. You know what I'm saying? That's always how I've been. If we the rising tide lifts all the ships and we go from there. All right, let me just take a couple looks at the at the board. Uh, Brad said, drop some guys like Williams, Verlander, Erod has been nice. Again, I like Gavin Williams a lot. I really like him a lot. He was a guy who was drafting a ton of. Yeah, yeah, again, if he's your one, that's the thing I won't budge on. I, I can't budge on that. If you, he's your guy, if you're like, yo, Williams is the guy that I like, that's, you know, her or whatever, yo, that's the kind of guy that you are. Sure, I'm fine with that. Becomes an issue if you stockpile these guys. I don't think you could stockpile them. Because it's so funny, we're like three days away from the season, and we we all, all of us might lose a player, right? All of us. There might be ten injuries between today and Thursday, and we're like, oh my gosh, I, why did I take a zero when I just wanted anything? And again, through sixteen weeks, you got to be a top two team. It just could come back and bite you in the arse. A lot of us that have played fantasy you know a lot of times these freaking seasons come down to the last day. You know how is this possible? It's been played for six months and come down to a run. How could it be separated by a run or a strikeout? It really is insane, but it always seems to be the case. Oh, so let me just look at the back of the board, and then we'll get everybody out of here. Um, again, right, you'll see. I, it's funny. This is So this is like understanding and perception becoming reality. If you look at the board, right, so the last three rounds up, there's only four outfielders in the last 36 picks. Colton Kowsler, he's a zero off the bat. Though, if he's your midseason ant, that's fine. He's the type. Excellent ceiling. I think I like Dominguez because he's already done it. The Yankees like know that. Both were a little more crowded. A difference. It's fine, though. It's fine. Uh, that's, you know, sp splitting hairs. Nelson Velasquez, who I mentioned, possibility to be great on a spike week. He's a very good last outfielder. If you push outfielders all the way up and you're tagging him on the outside and you need him to hit a couple bombs the weeks, you know, that uh, – Whatever, family, uh, Tatis or J Rod suck. That's a good one. Jared Kelnick. I don't think you could play Kelnick. I know he's got he's got a lot of you know fans, but I don't think I could go there. So when you're seeing the big face, means it's time to get out of here. So from Patty Mayo and all the lovely ladies and gentlemen at the Mayo Media Network, thank you so much for picking up where putting down from all the people in the comments section. The failings, right? We this is 300, baby, right? We give the books nothing. We take from them everything. We are stronger as a unit. Going back to what we were talking about with with baseball and sheep is right building the failings right one shield protects the other one spear protects the other yeah in underdog you and i are technically playing against each other but if we elevate each 
ourselves as we branch out individually, right, we become stronger. And then when we get into the betting streets, we'll be here first day of the season, every Monday through Friday. I want to do all the things that we do, man. I love, we're going to watch. It's just, we're going to show off. That's what we're going to do. We're going to show off. We're going to put on a freaking clinic every single day is what I do. The thing that we do, you know, me and you, the male media crew, baby. And we're going to get through a, a parlay. And then it's you and I against the book. And that's like where it really becomes important to be valuable, share, be a sponge. So that'll do it for the big man with the big mouth, for the big apple, big Johnny stud, man. You know, I love doing this. Get up in the comments. It matters more than it should. If you want the show all season and beyond, get up in the comments. Just say hi. Go on Twitter. Tag Pat. Say hi. Tag Underdog. Say, holy crap, that was awesome. Other than that, sign up to Underdog. The code is MMN. You see the warning down below. Be safe. Be smart. And one last thing. Remember, when you work this hard, if there's a lot less like luck, yo, we'll be back soon. See you soon.